Welcome back, this is Part-Time Guardian. On this video, we're gonna talk about Exotic Catalyst and what I think are the top 10 that you can get in the game right now. And again, if you enjoy these videos and like to support the channel, feel free to subscribe. I'm getting a lot of user growth lately, but not as much subscribers. I'll kind of show you guys a graphic real quick, so I'd really appreciate if you subscribe to the channel again. It would also give you notifications when videos you like show up on the channel. For those of you who are newer to the channel, one of the reasons I call myself part-time guardian is because like many of you and many people I know in the Destiny community, I do this part-time. I have a, a real job. Um, I have other responsibilities. I'm married. I have a, a kid. So, you know, I have to kind of fit this in where I, where I can. And so most of my videos have been aimed at that. But I've been doing a lot of build videos lately, and I will continue to do that. But I thought I might put out a few videos that are, again, geared towards part-time guardians, people who probably have accomplished a lot in the game, um, but probably do it in their spare time. So while they may have good skills and may have done some things, they're, they have, from a time period and how much time they spend in the game, they're more casual. So with that being said, uh, the next video I want to do is around Exotic Catalyst. And I'm going to pick the top 10 Exotic Catalysts that I think are useful not only useful, but also are balanced with how much effort it takes to get them. So again, there might be some uh, exotic catalysts I miss that are more useful, but they're they're really, really difficult to get. Or there may be some that are really easy to get, but aren't that useful. So let me kind of talk about that a little bit. So coming in at number 10 is the Prospector. The Prospector is an exotic grenade launcher that again, grenade launchers, while they're not the absolute king they used to be in boss DPS and things like that, they still come in handy. The Prospector itself, one of the reasons it's useful is that it actually is a full auto and things come out really quick out of the chamber. With the Catalyst, you actually get plus 40 blast radius and increased ammo. So again, there's other uh, grenade launchers that are just as useful, but in a pinch, if you're trying to use other things and maybe you don't have like a Swarm of the Raven or something like that, this comes in handy for things that you want to do a lot of damage really quickly. The Catalyst drops from Strikes and Nightfall bosses, and one thing to keep in, mi in mind with the drop rate, if you're in a clan that's ranked up pretty high, you actually get as part of your banner an increased chance of getting these drops in those activities when you're playing with members of your clan, so that's one thing to keep in mind. So obviously once you get it to get leveled up, you're going to need 500 kills, and I will actually talk about later in this video real quick what I feel is the easiest way to get kills uh, for a lot of these, because a lot of these, getting these casts leveled up, you, you need to use kills. The next one at number 9 is the Huckleberry. So the Huckleberry is a nice exotic submachine gun that allows you to really tear through enemies really quickly. The Catalyst itself gives you an Ambitious Assassin, which allows you to overflow the magazine based on rapid kills before reloading. So what's great about this is that you can be going through mowing down ads and you will continuously overflow your magazine. So it's something you can pretty much fire for a long period of time as long as you can kill. So anything you're killing like a trash ad or something will be useful. So again, this is really, really good if you're trying to clear out a bunch of ads in the activity. The source for this is for Horic Adventures. And again, to get this leveled up, you need 500 kills. At number eight is Crimson, and what separates Crimson? Crimson is an exotic hand cannon that does three bursts, and the other thing about it is if you get kills, you actually get healing. So this could actually help in PvE activities, and it actually can be really helpful in PvP when you get in tough corners. To get this, you need to get PvE kills, so it's pretty generic. Um, it gives you plus 20 range on the Catalyst. So again, the Catalyst is going to give you a little bit of extra range. The hand cannon is kind of nice. And to rank it up, you're going to need 300 precision kills. And number seven is the Jade Rabbit. So Jade Rabbit is an exotic scout rifle. So the thing about Jade Rabbit is it hits like a Mack truck, but the problem is it's very unwieldy. So you, when you get a kill afterwards, your gun kind of like flies in the air and it's very difficult to get very accurate shots. Now with the Catalyst, you get plus 30 stability. And why is this useful? When you're using this, that plus 30 stability, the gun will basically come right back into play exactly where you started. So basically, as long as you can hold your aim, and if you hit the scout rifle, usually the scout rifle in certain things, you're, if you get a headshot, you're going to kill. But let's say you don't. If it comes right back down, you'll be able to really quickly kill your enemies. So again, that's where it's really nice. Again, I, I used to not use Jade Rabbit until I got this Catalyst. So to get it, you need to do Crucible wins, and then you need to get 250 uh, wins uh, kills in Crucible. What I would say to get this the easiest way is when momentum control comes up. That would be a really easy way to get this because with the Jade Rabbit, if you hit someone once, they die. So again, that's why it's useful. Number six is Sweet Business. 
It's a sweet business it's a gun that some people like and some people hate. It's an auto rifle. You basically have to spin up, but once it's spun up, it, it does an incredible amount of damage. It basically is like a little mini Gatling gun and just mows through enemies. So to get this, you get it as a drop from Strikes or Crucible. And again, the great thing about the Sweet Business Catalyst, again, Sweet Business does a lot of stuff to be to begin with. Again, it, gets a, it just spins up. It does an incredible amount of damage, puts out a lot of bullets. Your incoming reflinch is reduced when it's spun up. And why this is great is when you're firing this and someone hits you, you're going to move all over the place, and it's very difficult to aim the weapon. But with this, it makes it just a killing machine. Um, a lot of people use it in PvE, but even in PvP, it can be, again, you'll have to go around a corner because you have to spin it up, but it can be a real game changer. To get this uh, catalyst again in Strikes and Crucible, and to get it leveled up, you need 250 multi kills, not just kills, multi kills. At number five is the Colony. So the Colony is a really uh, cheesy gun that basically has it's a grenade launcher, and it puts out robotic grenades that basically sh uh, track everyone all over the map. Um, you either love it or hate it. So this one drops in heroic strikes and nightfall bosses. Um, it gives you plus 10 to the magazine increased reserve. So why this is useful is the colony doesn't have a lot of ammo in it. And obviously with this increased ammo, you can stay in the fight a little bit longer because it, it only has so much ammo. This also comes in useful if you're going after something later like the mountaintop. It's really helpful with Crucible get kills with this. And this is also useful in Gambit. You can kind of go on the other side. And as long as uh, you get a, a team that's not that good at evading you, um, you can get some pretty easy kills as an invader. So again, Rourke Strikes and Bosses, uh, plus 10 to Magazine, increased Reserves, and 500 kills to get this kind of leveled up. At number four is the Wardcliffe Coil. So the Ward Cliff, if you haven't used it, it's an interesting weapon. It's a rocket launcher exotic. Again, you get it, the catalyst from the heroic strikes and nightfall bosses. It tends out a bunch of projectiles. Now, the thing about this weapon is it's a little unwieldy, so you have to be careful with it. Uh, there's a very real chance that if someone steps in front of you or if you're near a wall and you fire this out, those projectiles actually can kill you, so be really careful. But the great thing in some in some particular activities, so for instance, like the Spire Stars Raid, or if you're in comp, like in, in PvP, and you get an instant kill, it's pretty much guaranteed. So this is a really useful weapon in specific situations so again in those situations you'll find it very useful but you can't use it everywhere and again to level this up you need 500 kills and number three is a tractor cannon now some people will say why is this so high well because it is possibly so first off it's technically a shotgun but it's called the boop cannon so basically when you use it um, it, it's a void weapon that basically does some damage but will also with force and puts a debuff on your enemies but will force will also push things in the walls or off of cliffs or things like that. So first off, it's a fun weapon just to have it for memes. But in certain activities, especially raids and stuff like that, it's really useful because it actually puts a debuff effect, which will allow you to do extra damage on enemies. So while some people say why it's number three, A, in Crucible, if you use it and you know how to use it, it's pretty much a guaranteed kill. And it's fun. That's the other thing. And in PvE, in certain scenarios, it is a go-to thing for helping you do certain strategies and raids and things like that. So again, to get this, it's also one of the reasons I ranked higher because it, it's basically kills in PvE. I mean, you're just going to randomly get it. Uh, to when you level it up, it gets plus 75 to magazine increased reserves. Again, it doesn't have a lot of ammo. It's similar to the colony, so that's where it comes in useful. And you need 300 kills to level it up. At number two is Hard Light. So I know this is the weapon that really people love or hate, just like some of the other ones I talked about. And it's been recently nerfed a little bit in PvP because of that. So Hard Light is a weapon where you can basically change the burn on it from Arc to Solar to Void just by reloading. Um, it also has no uh, drop off to damage. Now some of that's changed recently, but I'll put it this way. It has reduced damage drop off. Now, historically, it's not been a stronger weapon because it's really shaky. It's hard to control. The other thing is when you do, when you have, it also is kind of like laser tag. And it has bullets that basically can go and bounce off walls, And they can do additional damage to enemies. So, again, it's got a lot of use. The problem is, historically, it was hard to control. But with this recent season, they've kind of, they've kind of turned that back down a little bit. Um, in fact, so much that it got nerfed recently with damage because people were complaining in PvP. So how do you get this? You get it from Heroic Strikes and Bosses. It gets plus 25 stability on the Catalyst. And to finish this off, you need a 1,000 kills. But again, it's a great weapon. So then what's number one? Well, I think it's pretty easy. The number one is Whisper. And 
I will say I debated whether this one should be this high because it is a little bit more difficult to obtain, but it's an absolutely critical weapon, especially with some of the recent changes to grenade launchers and things like that. If you're doing DPS in certain activities, this will now rank above Izanagi's and some of the other grenade launchers that used to be keying in certain activities. So the Whisper, first off, to get it, uh, Whisper of the Worm, you're going to need to get that from a normal Whisper completion. To start Whisper of the Worm, and there's plenty of videos on the internet on this, to start Whisper of the Worm, you're going to need to go to IO, go into um, a uh, public event in a certain area, and then based on that, complete that mission. It's got a lot of jumping puzzles, a lot of ads to kill within 20 minutes. It's a lot of fun. I would take a fire team with me. Once you complete that mission, you will get the Whisper, and then once you complete the Heroic, you'll get the Whisper Catalyst. But you still need to, to bump it up a little bit to finish it. But why is it really useful? Well, first off, you get plus 30, 30 to re reload speed, and it actually reloads pretty quickly. But you also get whisper breathing. So if you know about box breathing, this is similar. Basically, when you aim down the reticle for a period of time, you get whisper breathing, and you'll do a ton more damage against bosses. And so in certain activities, this is the king of DPS. Um, again, there's other weapons you can use in certain ways. Um, to get more DPS, but again, for part-time guardians, for people who are you know, kind of average players, this is definitely going to be king and where you're going to get the most DPS from. So if you want to go into activities, you really need this. So again, to get to level this up, you're going to need to do the heroic version of the Whisper three times, and you're going to have to collect chests in five different locations. I'm not going to put that in this video. There's plenty of videos on the internet on how to get that. And that's it. That's the top 10 list. What do you guys think? One thing I was going to throw in here real quick. If you are interested in trying to figure out how to get Catalyst quickly in a quick fashion, um, what I will tell you is I have another video where at the end of the video, I talk about the green room and the whisper. So again, after you get your whisper, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's probably the easiest way to get kills. Um, again, watch the video. It's towards the end of the video that I'm linking right now. And in that video, you'll see kind of the easiest way for any, almost any of these weapons to kind of level them up in the quickest fashion. So that's the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Get into the comments. Let me know what you'd like to see next. I'd like to do more of these videos where I kind of talk to kind of just, you know, your average um, hardcore Destiny player who does this in his part-time. Kind of what guides would be helpful for you. I know we have a lot of new people in the community. I'm starting to see that. We have a lot of new players who maybe don't know how to do certain things. So if there are things that interest you, feel free to drop those in the comments. And I'll see you, Guardians, in the Tower.